Oh, I'm just kidding. Don't make a mess. Don't make it's a mess. It's in your shirt. It's in. St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. Big, bold results, easy peasy, minimal effort, all right? Go to your store and get a wonderful brined corned beef brisket. This is a flat only. You can use flat point if you want to. Let's not overthink it. We're gonna use that funny little seasoning packet that's got some fun stuff in there, and we're gonna smoke it, okay? So we're upping the level a little bit here. We're elevating the corned beef and cabbage to a pastrami and cabbage. Let's get in the action. When we're lighting charcoal from a previous cook, all right, that's been extinguished, I find it's best to start with a couple of new pieces of charcoal, the larger pieces versus the ashed out, raked out, smaller pieces. You want maximum airflow to get you to temperature quicker. Once we light those new pieces, fully incorporate them into your charcoal pile from your previous fire, and we're gonna get up to temperature a lot quicker with reusing charcoal from a previous cook. Beautiful thing. Let's take a look at this corned beef brisket. You'll find that it comes with these little packets of, you know, traditional mustard seed and bay leaf. I see some peppercorns in there, uh, maybe some fennel. You know, these funky little things are worth their weight in gold, all right? There's a lot of big, bold flavor here. So for our pastrami, I'm gonna take our cool little knife here and just slice and sprinkle half of it on the fat cap side and half on the meat side. Beautiful. And this instills a lot of flavor, a lot of traditional notes of, of corned beef and pastrami. Look at that great color. I'm telling you, we can do our own uh, corned beef or you can go to the store and get it. I got no qualms with this at all. Um, so that seasoned up, we've got our coals started. I wanna sneak these wood chunks in there so we can start our pastrami. So as always, we're gonna sneak our dried wood chunks, not soaked wood chips into the hottest portion of our coal bed and I want to wait to see combustion. That's going to tell me that that smoke has cleared up. Then we'll put our deflector shields on, our grill grate, and we'll sneak this baby on. And we're going to smoke for about, let's call it two hours to get a nice bark on there before we transition to the next portion of the recipe. Two hours on the nose. Let's see what we've got. Oh yeah. Great caramelization. Love that and not tender enough quite yet, which is great because we've still got a little ways to go. So next portion of this recipe, we're gonna put a, just another grill grate there, but we're gonna put a Le Creuset right here on the side, uh, bring some water to temperature. You don't wanna use stock here. Uh, there's so much flavor because this is a brine product, it's gonna continue to leach out salinity and that beefy flavor. We're just gonna use water, now we've got to put in some other seasonings. We're gonna use a little fresh bay leaf, peppercorns, mustard seed, and whole cloves. And we're going to let it cook for about another hour and a half just to tenderize. Then the last 45 minutes to an hour is when we'll put our vegetables in. Whoa, 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 whoa. I forgot to put the garlic in. Obviously we want the garlic permeating from the get-go. Let's go ahead and drop these babies in that liquid. Oh yeah. Magic is happening and that will begin to uh, extrude flavor and impart it into our pastrami. Now, back to what we're thinking about for the root roast almost, right? Carrots, parsnips, these beautiful little potatoes, radishes, a little bit of onion, and of course you've gotta have the cabbage. Now I didn't go for just a, a standard head of cabbage, right? I've got a Napa cabbage I love uh, the flavor profile of this, and it's gonna soak up all of that cuisson or the liquid within the pot nicely, okay? More so than your standard head of, of just cabbage. So let's trim up these vegetables, clean them up just a little bit, and remember we're gonna drop these all in at the last 45 to 50 minutes of the cook. I checked the pastrami at the two hour mark and decided we were losing too much moisture, so I put a lid on it and it's gone for another two hours, so a total of four hours. And that's gonna differ between, you know, how big your roast is. And every single brisket is different, but we should be at a temperature of over 200 degrees now. And we're at 208, perfect. So that tells me we're getting nice and jiggly now. That's gonna have great mouthfeel. Let's go ahead and add some of these vegetables and add as many as your, your, your pot will take. 
And why didn't we add vegetables earlier? Four hours is a lot of time for simmering potatoes that just fall apart to nothing, right? So this is kind of a timer telling us, okay, our beef is could be done right now. We're gonna let it go for another 40 minutes, just long enough to finish these vegetables. And they'll still have their structural integrity and bring individuality to this wonderful dish. And you wanna make sure you get that cabbage in there because as we know, corned beef or pastrami and cabbage is just super traditional. And I think it's a good idea to go ahead and pop that top back on. Our grill is stabilized around 300 right now. And we'll check back in another 40 minutes. I'm getting super excited. Dinner time is rapidly approaching. So let's see where we are on the vegetables. <laughs> there it is. And that brings back memories. Uh, so first thing we need to do is get our roast out. And that is, wow. that is fabulous. It really is fat caps down here. I'm looking like it's trying to just fall apart like that. Okay, but we're gonna slice it across here. <laughs> I know, I know, I get so, so excited. You know, these, these one pot cookery, low and slow, traditional meals just speak to the soul. That is just so nice, so refreshing. Uh, and what I mean by fresh, refreshing is it's just, it just it brings back memories of eating together. So there it is, team. Uh, you know, just a slightly modified and elevated version of corned beef and cabbage. I mean, modified, elevated by the fact that we smoked our uh, our corned beef brisket. But this is stunning. This is so much fun. And the mustard, don't forget the mustard. A little touch of acid goes a long way to cleansing the palate to enjoying the whole entire thing. Let me grab a fork and we'll give a bite. Oh my gosh, building this bite. I just gotta do it separate here. Mm. Team, you gotta take your time with these things. You know, super simple to do. Uh, you know, and just follow technique. Simple things done perfectly win every time, I promise you. So this is perfect. It's getting dark. It's time to head in, put this at the center of the table. Folks, if you enjoyed this as much as everybody else is about to enjoy it, do me a favor, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification button, and please do leave us a comment. We love reading and responding to them uh, from our backyard to yours. Cheers and happy grilling.